Welcome to Ambassadors Worship Center, where we're growing a healthy church. Please enjoy the message from Bishop Jakari Cousins. Please like, subscribe, and share this message. Hello, and welcome to Ambassadors Worship Center Bible Study with me, Minister Rashawn Jefferson. We're so happy to have you come by here and hear about God. Um, we love you. And I want you to be just really in tune and really excited for this word. Um, I'm a big advocate of taking notes. So if you have a notebook or any way that you take notes, this is ty a type of um, multi-layered study. So it's going to require you for you to take notes, OK? I'm a little nerdy. I love notes, OK? Um, we're going to start this Bible study with prayer. So join me in prayer. Lord God. Hello again. Thank you for granting us another day at life, another chance to get it right, another chance to love you, experience your joy, and experience your peace, Lord God. Father God, thank you for being so great. Thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us. Thank you for all the promises that you've been stored in our life. Thank you for letting us live upon uh, the covenant of grace where we can ask for forgiveness, where we have access to the Holy Spirit, and where we can build a beautiful relationship with you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, for all the gifts that you all the gifts that you've instored in us. And thank you for helping us hone those gifts and grow who we are in you, Lord God. Continue to give us the wisdom. Continue for us to care for the things that you've given us, uh physical and uh things that have seen. God, um just take out all of me, replace all of you, Lord, everything that you want to say to your people, let it come flowing out of my mouth, Lord God. Um, take away all flesh that would stop any blessing or anything that is your plan in this study, God. Help me speak to your people exactly the way that you want me to. I thank you, Father, for gracing me with another opportunity to speak to your wonderful people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Again, it's a blessing you being here. I'm so grateful that you're here. We're going to dig into this study, and I think it's so needed. God has been really taking me. I feel that God has been leading me um, through his life in a really specific order. Um, all the studies that I've done have been um, kind of in a chronicle, chronological order of how he's living his life. So um, just as a recap, if you haven't seen the other Bible studies that we've done, um, we talked about um, the baptism of Jesus Christ, some of the things that he did because of the baptism. After that, um, he did about 40 days and was he did a 40-day fast and was tempted by the devil, and I talked about that. And next we'll be talking about uh, some of the teachings that he's done, that he did in the synagogue um, to the people about who God is and what it is to be a person, all that great stuff, okay? So the title of... My study is This is the Formula. Say it with me. This is the formula. This is the formula. Um, God is very purposeful in everything that he does and how he structures things. And I think it's so poignant for this uh, day and time. Always, I feel like I always say that. I love that word poignant. I think it's important in this day and time because we're living in a world of um, different formulas, especially for the Internet. So my husband's like a, a guru on internet marketing, just how things move, how people see things, and there's always a trend, there's always so many numbers, there's all these, uh, what's the word, what's the word, there's an algorithms, so many algorithms for how things are done, and sometimes in his realm, if you don't pay attention to these numbers, you get lost, you start doing things funny, and then a lot of your moves are not purposeful. So I, I, I don't know, maybe got, definitely got to get this to me because I didn't come up with this myself. Um, the title is definitely This is the Formula because we need a type of formula where God has given us all these purposeful moves to be able to do exactly what he wants us to do, learn exactly what he, what he wants us to learn. And sometimes in a time order to get to the other side of our blessing or to get to the other side of growth or, you know, whatever it is, your situation where God is growing you to really just fall in those steps and do exactly what he said, right? So we don't have to go around the circles. I don't like those circles. They're not fun. Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about this, uh, what happens before this chapter. So I'll be coming from Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 33. My first scripture will be in the King James Version. I'll be going through most of chapter 6, um, 
in secondary in the NIV, okay? Or in the I, oh Lord, international, Lord Jesus, help me. Hold on. There you go. New international version. In, yeah, I said it right, NIV. There's so many Bs and get confused. Okay? So in chapter 6 of Matthew, um, God is going through Galilee teaching. Now, before this, he had his baptism in, in chapter 3, and I'm doing this purposely so you guys take notes and know the scene of where Jesus is right now. So in chapter 3, he's already been baptized. Chapter 4, he goes on his fast. We talked about this, I think, last time I did a study. And then in chapter 5, he goes over the Beatitudes, still teaching. And then chapter 6, he really gets in on like a nice, cool package of the important things that are going to help you seek God. Okay, so let's get to the scripture. Matthew 6, verse 33, New King James Version. Or, sorry, King James Version. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. One more time. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, now this is the end of chapter 6. Okay, this is the very end. So this is the conclusion of all the things he talked about, which is the righteousness and the things that you're seeking and what's going to be added unto you. Okay, follow me, follow me, follow me. We're almost there. Follow me. Okay, so in seeking ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, what are those things that we or he's already talked about that you should be seeking that you want added unto you okay so god took me through seven verses in that funny seven verses of a type of package to get you started on like the first few things that are important for you to have when you are cultivating a relationship with the father and you're trying to get to the next level of something okay this is like the package so I say that this is like the package start of, of what he's trying to teach because right before this chapter, I told you the baptism, it was the fast, and then he got his 12 disciples, and then they went out teaching. So um, it is, it's important when you are new at something, this is the first time God or Jesus is going out to tell people about God, what he offers, you know, things like that. Think of it as like marketing. I know I try to put it in the real world sense. I need to know the basic, the basics or the basis of what you're talking about. When you tell me something, you give me a new product, you're trying to show me something, I need to understand the basics of what you're talking about. So in this, God gives a very specific order on seven things that were super important to help you get to the next side of of who are actually to get you to understand who you are as a Christian, a Christian, and get you to the next side of evolving as a Christian, Christian person working in ministry or just living a life for God. Okay. All right. So he took me to uh, six, chapter six, verse six. Okay. What are all these things? That's the question. All right. So the first thing was praying in secret. Okay. Praying in secret. And here's the scripture. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father, who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Now, this scripture is telling you about prayer and how you go in your secret place and you talk to your father about what's going on. This is the basis, actually prayer is the basis of how you build a relationship with God. And you can never get that relationship if you don't open your mouth and communicate. It doesn't have to be physically opening your mouth. But if you don't open up your being to communicate with the father, either within your mind or out loud through paper, however you want to communicate or pray or talk to God, the basis is talking to God, okay? So with that, like I said, you get a relationship. One of the cool examples for me was just thinking about my life, um, sitting down with my grandpa at a very young age, 
um, we used to garden. And sometimes it would be in those quiet, like it says in the secret, in a secret place, in those quiet places where I'm digging in the dirt, but he's able to impart in me, you know, a bunch of wisdom while I'm just with him. And it's so, it's so alike when I talk to God. Just, I'm in a, a quiet place and I could just talk to him and he can impart wisdom with me and we could build a conversation to where he understands me and I understand him, but I need to be understanding him most of the time. So without a uh, prayer, you really can't go anywhere to even start a journey with God. So that is very, very important. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us that. Our next scripture is verse seven. Okay. We're still dealing with prayer. So it says, prayer structure, verse 7. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. All right. Not only are you talking to God, you need to talk to him with some respect. You need to put some respect on his name. So the example I had for that was you don't just address your mom like hey girl what's up how you doing you know it's like hold on me and you have a different relationship a mother and a daughter or a father and a daughter or a son you guys have a different defined relationship where you just can't you know walk up on your mom's and just talk to her any type of way you have to address her in her title she is mother i respect her she teaches me and i can't talk to her reckless she's not one of little one of your little friends <laughs> Like most moms would say, I say black moms. I'm not one of your little friends. So there is a prayer structure that we must have uh, to talk to God. So we're not babbling like pagans. And he gives that he gives us that structure in verse 9. Like I said, you got to get your notes ready because this was a note type of day. Okay. So number one, pray in secret. Very important. That's how we start our communication with God. Number two, prayer structure. You have to talk to God in a certain type of way. Okay, you have to establish respect and make sure that he understands you. And with him understanding you, you need to be coming from a place of the word because he has wrote the word. You're supposed to take that word and be able to talk from that place. And that's how you communicate with your creator. Okay, number three, offering forgiveness. Ooh, I know this one hurts. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to hit y'all a little bit. Hit this one. Verse 15. This is where we find it offering forgiveness but if you do not forgive men their sins your father will not forgive your sins ouch oh no we don't want that so it's all of this is important it's important that we reflect all of god's being with that we have to forgive um with forgiveness we're able to we're able to be god-like we're able to extend the hand when people need help. We're able to we're able to do the things God is asking us to do because he did it for us. So, like he said, it's it's the expect it's the expectation that you're able to forgive. Okay? Where is it? 15. Be godlike to your fellow man. Operate as an extension of God. Proper friend and proper relationship. Especially operating as a lover of God, you have to be able to extend proper friendship. Um, you show people the best side of what it is to be a friend because you have a relationship with God. He's extended friendship to you. So whatever he's doing or whatever he showed you, you should be reenacting or in, imparting into your life. So being a proper friend um, is very poignant in reflecting um, forgiveness in a relationship if we don't practice forgiveness it's like it's like how we try to heal communication you know humans are going to be humans some people don't always agree but you cannot you can't hold somebody in a funky place in your spirit because you disagree or you don't like what they did um there are always going to be issues with humans and communication period you see it because of you know People break up friendships, people have divorce, and it's because of the communication or the unforgiveness or those rifts that we just can't take care of and smoothen out, smooth them out and have forgiveness and be like, 
you know, it's okay, we'll just move on from here. There's always going to be a problem. If you don't know how to diffuse a problem and put forgiveness on it, it's going to be tough um, riding this road in loving God. If that's a hiccup. And I'm not going to say, like, I'm perfect or anybody else is, is perfect in forgiveness. It takes lots of practice to forgive and be okay and move on. So if you're not there, that's okay. I say all levels of, of you knowing God, perfectly fine. You being right here right now is like perfect. So we all understand, we all can paint the picture of forgiveness must be across the board. So if you're working on it, good job. If you're not, hey, you know what you need to. And um, there's room for you to grow and it's okay. All right? So our next one was fasting. I know, fasting hurts too. Okay? So we're gonna find that in verse 17. But when you fast, Put oil on your head and wash your face. I just took that one. Getting ready or getting the fleshly desires under control is probably some of the hardest parts of trying to live for God. Okay? No, and I'm not going to say it's some of. It is the hardest part of trying to live for God. Um. And you knowing who you are as a Christian and you're getting this starter pack information about loving God, fasting is is one of those things that you're going to wrestle with, you know, taking away something. That is feeding your fleshly desire. We come into this life all flesh. You know, you feel when babies are hungry, they yell out, you know, they cry. Ah, you know, I need some food. That's the marker. Um, when we get hurt, ow, you have pain signals. Um, when we really want something, let's say it be one of those desires, um, you're after it, and, and that's what you want to do. Um, we need to learn how to turn those things off when we need to. And a lot of hurt sometimes come from, comes from not knowing when to turn it off. Or not being appropriate in our manners in our phys our physical state. So, you know, many people have been through many things, um, but some of the bases of where you can help tame your flesh and tell yourself no, and tell other people no, is when you practice your practice it yourself. So God practiced um, fasting for those forty days right after his, he came out of his baptism, and said no to the devil many times you know devil offered many things you know do this not give this do that not you know do that he was saying no 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 so when he went out he had that example to show that i can control myself okay self-control is important okay especially in loving god because we're faced with all kind of things dm messages um fatty foods that you know, and the urge to just keep eating, um, depression and sadness, um, maybe drinking, just those substance abuses. You have to learn how to say no, or it's going to be so hard. It's going to be so hard to live a Christian life. And it already is hard to live a Christian life. But when you learn to say no, it gets easier, and especially when you practice. I think just like I preached or I gave a word a few weeks ago, when you practice, you can make it perfect. Like, you know, practice makes perfect. You can practice those things. Like, you practice running, you get faster. Um, you practice lifting weights, you get stronger. You practice fasting, you practice saying no to your flesh, okay? This is the formula. This is the formula. This is good. This is good, okay? Our next point is physical and spiritual wealth and the difference, okay? So, we went over praying in secret. Praying, structure, offering forgiveness, fasting, and we're at spiritual and physical wealth and the difference. Okay, we find this in verse 20. But store up yourself treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. And where thieves do not break in and steal. Okay, that's super good. Being familiar with how you should operate in the physical and spiritual realm and the riches in both um, 
are like mind, body, and spirit 101. I had to explain to my daughter a few days ago. I was like, um, we were, we were, we were counting money, and she's like, "Mommy, you're rich," and I was like, "No, I'm not. <laughs> not yet. No, I'm not." And I was like, "You know what? You're rich," and she's like, "Hmm." I was like, "You're rich because you're a good person and you know God." She's like, "Huh? I am rich." So she had a different definition of wealth. She knew about physical wealth. When you got money, you could go spend your money, you could get things, you could invest in things. We could buy a million JoJo Siwa bows and put them all over our hair. <laughs> but other than that, she knows that if I do the will of God, if I am kind and if I exercise the things that God has taught me, that makes me rich as well. And a lot of people don't know that. And I think a lot of people don't consider themselves that. Um, and I sometimes think physical wealth overtakes spiritual wealth. And where we're really storing our riches. Um, God's, God is letting you know as you go through these things, the prayer, the structure, the learning to forgive, the fasting. You're, this is spiritual currency to get you closer to being godlike. This is the money you're putting in the bank to be able to get, uh, was it the dividends? To be able to get the money out that you've invested in the spiritual life, right? So beautiful. And God defines the difference of both of where you're, where, how you're working all these out, all these things out. And it's storing up in heaven, even though you might not see it. The more you store these things up. It's important, and it's being saved somewhere. It's being counted, and it counts for something. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. All right, our our next one is defining evil. Verse twenty three. I, I told you it was a notes day. Verse twenty three. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great that darkness! So I think it's awesome that that scripture piggybacks right off of spiritual and physical wealth. It really all comes down to your intentions. I hope your intentions are well. So if your intentions intentions are well, they're going to reflect godliness. Basics, you know, if your intentions are bad, you're not going to reflect godliness. You're going to reflect darkness. And that is definitely the difference between the two. Okay. It's pretty cut and dry and self-explanatory. Our last scripture is 25. And I did not write down here. All right, 25. 25 is physical support from God. Okay, physical support, not spiritual, physical. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear or what you will wear. Um, is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Okay. So in a quick synopsis to me, that was talking about faith. Like, don't worry. If you are getting to know this God and you're praying in secret, you're you're making your sense structure so you could communicate with him. You're offering forgiveness to your fellow man. You're fasting and molding yourself. You have spiritual wealth and physical, well, spiritual and physical wealth, and you know the difference of what you're getting yourself into. You could define evil when you see it. You know, having faith and holding on to these things, things you know, don't worry about it. Don't worry. Just keep walking to me. Keep talking to me. Keep doing the things that you're doing. Walking in that will. And I'll help you. And I'll supply you with everything you need. The desires of your heart. You know, I'm going to have your back. That's basically the chapter. And at the end of this, like I said, this is chapter 25. And we came in on the last verse. And this is 33. But seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you. Okay. Is this good? I hope this is good. 
So I'm going to go over the topics again of the seven chapters he took me through before we got to verse six, um, chapter six, verse thirty-three. So God, like I say, is going through the synagogues, and this was a package deal. I'm going to say a package deal where he's trying to teach you to make sure you know yourself as a growing Christian and you know where you're going. What's the next step, okay? Praying in secret, which is verse 6. Prayer structure, which is verse 7. Offering forgiveness, which is verse 15. Fasting, which is verse 17. Uh, spiritual and physical wealth and the difference, verse 20, defining evil, verse 23, and physical support from God, verse 25. So, yeah, it's like I'm seeking these things, you know, seeking God first and kingdom of God and his righteousness. And how does that matter to me? As things being added unto me, how does that matter? How do all these things translate? I need to do this. How do all these things translate into my today? Okay, that's a good question, and I have an answer for you. Okay, so with verse six, it's cool because if you can't talk to God about your life and your game plan, you know, it's just like write it out. If you don't make it make it plain and just write it out. Put it up somewhere, like people that make business plans. If you don't plan it out and talk about it and get it all structured up, you're not going nowhere, right? You ain't going nowhere. So I'm going to game plan for yourself, knowing how to operate in a relationship and have consistency in communicating. Verse 6 shows you that, okay? Verse 6 shows you that, okay? So verse 7. Or prayer structure. How is that helping me today? Prayer structure is for yourself, and it's for God, and it's for other people. That prayer structure teams it. The prayer structure sums up respect. How you're supposed to be speaking to God. How you're supposed to be praying. The respect for yourself, the respect for God, and other people are kind of like an all-in-one thing when you start opening your mouth. When you know how you're old, to open your mouth to people to speak to them in a proper way, it's just grooming you to do what you need to do better. Okay, I don't know how to sum that up in a more simple way. All right? So, that was verse 15. Offering forgiveness, how does that help me in my today? Oh, that's going to help you a lot. <laughs> that's going to help you a ton. Forgiving... Is for yourself, forgiving is for other people, and it's for God. We go through things, and sometimes you need to forgive yourself for yourself, right? There's hurt that was done to you that you needed to heal yourself, or you need to operate in the place of healing and tell yourself sorry for putting yourself there. And that's okay. Forgiveness is for you, for you. Forgiveness is towards God. Hey, God, forgive me for, you know, thoughts I'm having. Help me clean this up. Help me get this together so I could get to where I'm going, you know. Forgiveness is for God and you when y'all talk. Forgiveness is for others. You can't let those situations run you into the ground. You got to be like, you know what, girl, I love you. We good? And we're going to move on. All right. Ooh. Saying no, okay, the next one was spiritual and physical wealth. Um, sorry, that was not the right thing. Fasting, it's fasting. Next one's fasting. How does fasting help me in my today? I'm um, saying no to things that are going to physically allure me, throw me out track. Um, I'm going to say no. It's a lot of things you have to say no to in this life to just not be bogged down with more drama you have to deal with okay saying no is important all right spiritual wealth and physical wealth know your wealth your worth period know where, where you're investing your time and energy to period you don't go around throwing away money well, i hope you don't i don't i don't like to do that i like to get what i need i like to invest my money where i know it's going to grow I have to put stuff in places purposely so I know they're going to grow toward my benefit. Know your worth, okay? Verse 23 was 
defining e- uh, evil, sometimes you have to be very, you have to be very purposeful with the people you hang out with. Everybody is not to hang out with. Everybody is not under the same covering of your ideals and aspects of how to live life. And that's okay. And sometimes you cannot do that. You can't go there and you have to associate with some different folks, okay? I know there's uh, a saying that, you know, you know where you're going to go when you look at the closest five people in your, in your circle. And when you look at the closest five people in your circle, if they're all, like, doing drugs, if they're all, you know, just kind of bumming out, you know, just not doing what you're supposed to do, and you're like, man, I want to start a business, or man, I just really want to know God better, and nobody's in your circle doing that, you're going to have a really hard time get to that next level if the people around you are not going to be reflecting that same environment in which you see yourself in, okay? It's kind of apparent. Hey, some people don't know, but hey, we're on different levels of learning. All right, last one. I know this is long, but it's good for you. Physical support from God. Trusting God in any circumstance. That's how that reflects to you today. Like we always say, I feel like in every single sermon we're having, these times are very uncertain. But God is still blessing, and we still see evidence of him every day, of him doing something in somebody's life. Just a simple breath of life. And trusting them that, hey, I'm going to walk through this Saturday and still be alive. It's like, woo, I made it. Let's do it again tomorrow. Trusting God is important in all your days. Okay. And this is the formula. This is the formula for knowing God, joining him, getting to your next level. It's like the basis. These are some of the first teachings God had offered when right out or fresh out of his fast, okay? Fresh out of having the disciples. This is a package deal that he's giving you in a very good type of order, okay? In knowing God. Because I know sometimes getting to know God could be so confusing. The Bible's like, oh my God, it's so much stuff in here. I don't know where to start, you know? If I can even crunch it down even smaller, I know I, in, a, in a later text or in a later study I said, you know, just start in Matthew somewhere and start reading about his life. But if you want to get even more down to, you know, bullet points of what do I do when I'm in Christ? What's the formula? What things should I just be following right now that I could just that could get in and I can remember is going to help me grow? Like today, right now, I need to do these things. Go to chapter 6. Go through all these points. Verse 6, verse 7, verse 15, verse 17, verse 20, verse 23, verse 25, and 33. And it will help you with prayer, prayer structure, offering forgiveness, fasting, spiritual and physical wealth, defining evil, um, and God's physical support. You know, not only spiritual, but physical support. Okay? I hope you learned something in this study. I'm going to end this with a prayer, and I hope you were super blessed by this. Um, if you want to, to give to the ministry, you can give to Ambassadors Worship Center. It's down at the bottom. Um, please be a blessing. My bitch is doing a bunch of crazy stuff, and I'm so proud of him. <laughs> so I'm going to say that I'm super, super proud of him. So all the stuff that he does, because I, I know I pay tithes, and I be know he's like, hey, what, what are we doing next, sir? What, what are we investing in? He's super open. So um, I know I'm very, you know, like, oh, that scared me. <laughs> I'm very um, open about, uh, you know, where finance is going. And he is totally transparent so i trust my bishop with my money so um or it's god's money so don't be afraid to give you should give to this ministry i love giving this ministry because i always see things grow okay super amazing super super amazing all right i'm going to end this with a prayer lord god thank you for giving us this awesome structure i love structure about who you are and how to grow in you where do we start um how do we pray you know you just give us everything in chapter six and i thank you for being an on-time god i thank you for being a purposeful god because uh, sometimes we need things in bullet point forms and sometimes we need things delivered to us in a different palatable ways so lord god i just pray that this study was palatable i know it was long but it's the way you gave it to me i hope it was palatable palatable for your people lord god um for the ones that took notes 
please let them read these notes again if they ever get unsure of what they're doing in you, Lord God. And for people that didn't take notes but they watched the video already through, Lord God, let them go back to the beginning, get the notes, and watch everything again, Lord God. This is a very beautiful study, and I'm so blessed to be able to orchestrate this for you, Father. Um, keep blessing, keep saving, keep loving us, and keep more people coming back to this ministry to get more of you, Lord God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I can't thank you enough. And I love you, God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming in to learn this study with us. I hope you'll be back for another Bible study. All right? Have a good one. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to the Growing a Healthy Church broadcast. We hope you enjoyed the message from Bishop Jakari Cousins. If you'd like to sow a seed, you can sow a seed at AWCSD on Cash App.